Hey, happy Wednesday to you this morning. <clears throat> Praise God. We're on Proverbs 13 today. And if you'll turn there, Proverbs 13, verse 11. This is why I love doing these, <clears throat> because we can cover so many different subjects. So when you're preaching you know, on Sunday, you can only cover certain things and, and stay basically upon one different topic, one certain topic. <clears throat> but here, as we go through these 31 books of Proverbs or 31 Proverbs, and within those 31 different chapters or whatever you want to call them, there are so many, maybe 30, 20 to 30 different little bites, little nuggets that we can get that can help us. And I try to listen to my spirit when I'm doing these <clears throat> and get these to you for, for, for your, hopefully for your morning commute or shaving or making breakfast or whatever. 15, you know, you try to spend about 15, 20 minutes. Sometimes I've gone a little bit over that, but usually it's around 15 minutes. So let me give you one this morning from Proverbs 13, 11. It says, dishonest money, dishonest money dwindles away. But whoever gathers little by little makes it grow. Let me give it to you one more time. Dis dishonest money. What is dishonest money? It says it dwindles away. But whoever gathers little by little makes it grow. I look at different translations of this because what is when you use the word dishonest, it doesn't always mean that it's... Um, <clears throat> we could almost say it's dishonorable because uh, it, it doesn't do you good in the long run. It doesn't mean you've stolen it necessarily, though it certainly includes it. It doesn't just uh, deal with uh, people that are thieves, but it deals with, with people that how quickly you get it before maybe you're ready to handle it. So that word dishonest there be a little, it's a, a little bit misleading. I'll give you some more translations. It says, Money that's gotten in haste. One translation says it like this. The more easily you get your wealth, the quicker you will lose it. But you stop and think about that. Now, that's a kind of a loose translation. But I wrote it down because I thought it really exemplified. We want to, you know, have you heard of the get-rich-quick schemes? <clears throat> How many times have you been approached by a salesman? They were tried to sell you something that you did not need. He knew you didn't need it. He didn't listen to you, he or she. They did not listen to you and you said, you know, I'm just looking, I'm just I'm not really in the market, I'm just looking around. And they kept talking about how great it was and everything. They kept pushing it and they kept pushing it. And you wonder why um, so many people try to avoid them. You know, you walk into a furniture store and they are, they're on you. You walk into a car lot, they're on you. Well, they, they have to make a living. And I certainly, uh, I know, <clears throat> I've told people that, I go, look, you know, they're, they're, they're not out to hurt you. They're out to make a dollar, and they're out to serve you, and they're out to make a living, and I understand that. It comes a time, though, that you have to use, uh, well, every single time you have to use discretion. And some, what some people call a good salesman is someone that can make the sale no matter what. Now, God does not consider a good salesman someone who just makes a sale no matter what. God is looking at people that uh, will be honest about it and honorable about it and steer people in a direction that's not going to be hurtful to them but helpful to them. And you might say, well, I'm, I'm, I won't get as many sales. Uh, you know, I, I won't make as much money. Well, that's why sometimes I don't know that I could be a salesman like some guys do, some people do, because I'm not going to just tell people anything they, that, I, that I want them to hear or that I think they want to hear. If you make a sale and you cause someone trouble and they, and they end up hurting them, but you help steer that, you're a stumbling block. And God talks about that money that you've gotten for, from a sale that, at someone else's pain. Because the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. And he adds no sorrow to it. How? So God's not wanting you to be wealthy at somebody else's expense. If they cause a transaction to happen and, they, and, and a fair deal is made, then both parties are happy, and that's what God likes. That's what you would like. That's what I would like. That's what God likes. He says that, that uh, unjust scales are an abomination to God. He, he wants them to be balanced. So not just where you got a good deal, but they got a good deal. And that's really what it's all about, the free enterprise system. 
you get a good deal for the best possible price, and they get a good deal. You both walk away happy. Again, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and he adds no sorry to it. Sorrow to it. Sorry. Yeah. Well, people really regret, resent buyer's remorse <clears throat> because they were told something, you know, how quickly it was going to work. And I've known people that invested very large amounts of money in get-rich-quick schemes, and they lost everything. And they were incredibly bitter and incredibly angry. The scripture says, <clears throat> well, put it this way. Um, we've heard of, give, let me give you some examples here. And this is a little bit different than I usually do, but, but I think this needs to be, th there was a movie out, and I forget the name of it, but I saw it on Netflix, and <clears throat> where people go into older people's homes and they, and they declare them in, you know, dementia patient or whatever and that they can't run their own affairs and or I think a movie is called I Care a Lot or something like that. And it was and it's incredible. And I thought, do people do this? And they do. They they get in and they get they get governance over people's finances and and their scams and they take their money, take old people's money. You know the Bible talks about <clears throat> that God is the protector of the widow and the orphan. And that true religion is this, true religion. When God <coughs> Excuse me. When God does with true religion, He says that you would visit and you would take care of widows and orphans. You not take advantage of them. The Scripture talks about people, <clears throat> ministries that have gone into what they called silly. The King James calls it silly women, and it says that they come in and they take they they, have, they take their finances. You hear preachers all the time. Uh, I used to hear it all the time. I don't think I hear it anymore <clears throat> nearly as much. But you hear ministries go, well, if you don't give, we have to go off the air. And, you know, Grandma's out there with her last on her Social Security check. And, and she just feels so bad for them because they come from, a, <coughs> from an angle, angle of always needing and, and taking advantage of people, taking advantage of people's emotions so they can get. And they don't even know what they're doing to hurt people. So even that, I try to be very careful talking about finance. This is my 37-year ministry. <clears throat> I, I'm trying to be very careful because God loves a cheerful giver. We don't want to take from the people. We want to steal from the people. We don't want to take it from them, especially cheat them out of it by, by hook and crook. <clears throat> I knew of people that on the deathbed that certain family members would go in and have a last will and testament signed, signed, and notarized right before someone dies and ch cheated the, the family, the rest of the family out of the inheritance, people that I knew very well, and cheated the other family members out of the inheritance. And these family members had been, were, had been <clears throat> their parent had died, and, and they, they were left without really any income. <clears throat> and another one of the people went in, I'm not going to leave them nameless, but they went in and they, they got the last will and testament by coercion. And they could have battled that in court, and I think they did, but that person still won in court. This person was on their deathbed, and they signed this, they signed this will, got a notarized, and they cheated the rest of the family out of any inheritance, all inheritance. Now, <clears throat> dishonest money dwindles away. You'll find that people that do things by hook and crook and have I got a deal for you, that those people usually have about 17 different jobs. They don't. Not, they're not going to allow themselves to be raided by Yelp because they're because they're here today and gone tomorrow, and they have the latest toys, and they look like they're they're prospering. And, the, and again, David said, "Why do the wicked prosper?" And then God shows him their end. Let me tell you this: dishonest money always dwindles away. It says, <clears throat> "But the more the the more easily you get wealth, the quicker you will lose it." You know why? Because there's not been an appreciation for it. If God has blessed you, it's because you have first been a giver. Give, and it shall be given. You had to have some pain and some investment in order to receive a return. You know what it costs to put that in there. You know you had, you had skin in the game. So it's not someone that just won the lottery or something and you put a couple dollars in and win $40 million. You know, the, the, they've got a thing called the curse of the lottery. You should Google it. And watch what happens to people that do not have, that, that live for money. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of it. Not money, but the love of it. 
that people look at it to be their God, to be their protection, to be their source of everything. And God's, <clears throat> in the curse of the lottery, almost every single person that won the lottery ended up having less than they did before they won it. They got all kinds of uh, uh, excess and all kinds of strife with others and jealousy and buying friends and thinking it was going to last forever. And, and they, call it the, they literally call it the curse, <clears throat> the curse of the lottery. And they ended up having less. And you think, how in the world could you squander that much money? Because they didn't get it by honest gain. They got it. You were know, saying, easy come, easy go. But it says, <clears throat> in Proverbs 13, 11, it says, but whoever, whoever gathers it little by little makes it grow. You ever notice that your children grow an inch at a time? They don't grow six inches in a week. They're growing an inch at a time, little by little. You know why? Because as they grow, they have to what we call like a puppy. You have to grow into your skin. You have to grow into your body. You see people that have these four or five, six inch growth spurts over summer, especially kids have this. They'll have four, they'll grow four or five, six inches in one summer. And then they, they kind of get gangly and they just have to, we call it growing into their own body, growing into their own skin because their muscles aren't coordinated to catch up yet with the skeletal that's grown. This happens so fast. But the people that grow little by little, they can maintain the balance, they maintain the strength, they maintain the coordination. <clears throat> the scriptures tells us not to despise the day of small beginnings. We so often do thinking it's not, it's incremental, it's not, it's, it's not exciting, it's not happening fast enough. But it says that those that gather it little by little, they make it grow. There's a respect for it. There's an appreciation for it. There's a, and so they, they don't love money, but they do respect it, and they become a good steward of it because they realize that it's been incremental. And you know why God gives an incremental? So that it's not easy come, easy go. When it's gained that way, the old Nike expression, no pain, no gain. When you grow and you are a good steward with it and you grow, <clears throat> you can look at it in the homes that you own. You, you start out in a, maybe a one-bedroom apartment and you grow to this and you, there's, there's a, and you always look back on that one-bedroom apartment as a wonderful beginning. You talk about how good it was and, and when you were in it, you couldn't wait to get out of it and you get to the new house and, and I've had four or five homes in my life and, <clears throat> and you just, and, and every one just got a, maybe a little bit better and, but it was all incremental. I didn't even get my first home until I was 37, 39 years of age. That's when I got my first home. And it was a nice little home, but it was humble. And I was so proud of it. I was just as proud of it as I was the biggest home I've ever owned. Maybe more so because it was, it, it did not, I didn't get it easily. I didn't get it overnight. And I didn't get it by someone just handing it to me. We worked for it. We sowed for it. We believed for it. And we endured and waited patiently for it. But there's a reason I've always taken care of my homes. Because, and there's a reason I always take care of my cars. People weren't buying me cars. I had to make the payment. When you make the payment, you have a respect for it. So when you give your children everything and they never have to work for anything, they don't have a respect for it. They don't honor it. They may be excited about it when they first get it, but when you get it little by little, you'll make it grow. And you'll know, not only that, you'll make it last. And that's true prosperity. Not that you get wealth, but you're able to keep it. Amen? <clears throat> Let me give you some things that dishonest money, some uh, uh, think, uh, different uh, illustrations of dishonest money. Stealing money from your parents. As they get older, you take maybe you're taking care of their finances and you give yourself a little bit more than what you should. Taking advantage of widows and orphans. You know, <coughs> excuse me, there's these uh, telecommunications that'll call especially older people or always selling older people something. And they take advantage of them. That's dishonest money. When you take advantage of older people and <clears throat> then and uh, God's watching that. You will not prosper long term. And you kind of think you're smart and cute and you're getting away with it and those dummies and but the fact of the matter is God's watching out over those people. And everything done in darkness will be brought into light. Cheating on your income tax. Now that doesn't mean someone who's made a mistake on it. It means someone who's hiding things. I knew a person that hid things and developed shell companies, shell companies, and <clears throat> they're born again Christian tithers. Went to church every Sunday, and it's not that they didn't pay their income tax. They hid things and developed shell companies, <coughs> and they 
transfer of money to these companies to try to hide it from the IRS. They got found out, born again Christian, spirit filled, went to jail. Do they deserve to go to jail? Yeah, that was not a mistake on their income tax or failure to, to you know, to, to put everything in there because they missed something. That's not, most people have, have made a mistake or if you got complicated, in, you know, there's different complicated different things and not everybody's, this is clear cut and you fill out your, your, your income tax <coughs> uh, forms. So there's, there's mistakes that can be made, but that's not dishonest. When they can prove that things were done on purpose to hide, that's a different ball game, and that's dishonest money. So just these people had a big home, they had a lot of things, but they did that. They did that because they weren't paying their taxes. You know, Jesus said, "Given to God, that is God's; given to Caesar, that is Caesar's." Amen. <clears throat> not being a cheat, not taking more than you that than you, you know, writing down business expenses, you know, um, for your own personal thing and um, that that's I mean I know I'm just I'm just kind of just talking to you today not preaching but just kind of sharing with you these are and people justify it the Bible says that wisdom is justified of her children they justify it <clears throat> but God is the judge and it's better that we have honest money better is little with quietness than a house that's full of sacrifices with dishonest gain doesn't say exactly like that but <clears throat> but things that end up causing strife and trouble. Just kind of talking to you today, aren't I? <clears throat> um, you think you, that people that have a lot of money, you think that they're always happy, but people that have done it the right way, they may not have as much at the beginning, but they'll have joy the entire journey. They'll be able to sleep at night. They won't be looking for the other shoe to drop on them. Uh, they'll have peace, they'll have harmony, they'll have joy, and they'll be able to appreciate what they have. And even what they have, those people that walk so carefully and so circumspectly, they'll get they'll incremental, they'll get bigger and bigger. And by, by honest money, honest effort, says you'll make what you have grow. I've seen it happen in my own life. <clears throat> and I look back at it now and go, wow. I mean, most people would be so discouraged if they didn't have a home before they were 39, but... But since that day, I've had remarkable homes and beautiful homes. It took a long time, but I stayed faithful, got it honorably, got it honestly, and God always blessed me. Little by little is better than a bunch at the beginning to watch it all be gone at the end. Mark those things. Do not despise where you're at right now. Continue to be faithful in the step which is little, and God will make you ruler over much. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.